Engineer is one of the backgrounds that lends itself to being a good producer. It's not the background that you must have. It's kind of like if you want to be the president, you can basically be in economic <laughs> economics, you can be in health. There have been people who have delivered babies and also worked in the Senate. You can do a great many things to get from one place to another. Um, but the genesis or the, the sort of, um, uh, I guess you could say that people are of the ilk of musicians or engineers before they are producers, almost across the board. There might be a few of those administrative people who work their way into being a producer, the more executive producer type folks who maybe have a management background. But to my mind, I feel strongly that you do not get into producing before you either know music extremely well from a musician's point of view, or you know recording extremely well from an engineer's point of view, or the two together. Uh, so I would advise students to learn about as much of both of those types of skill sets as they can so that they can be if they can combine them at will uh, and be more effective as a result. So the other thing to, to, to lend to your question about students who are aspiring to be producers, we have a, a meaningful conversation in my producing one class about what the heck that word means, producer. Um, in the beginning, producers were composers. And composers were the star icons of the music industry before recording took hold. You know. And I guess the genesis of being a producer is being able to communicate with musicians. So how in the heck are you going to do that <laughs> if you are not somewhat of a musician yourself, you see? Uh, but nowadays, the stardom about being a producer is a wholly different matter than it once was. I have had students in my class who admit to me on the first day of class that they are in my class producing recorded music one because they like what they've seen on TV. They like to see Pharrell put his arm around Clive Davis and Quincy at the same time on some red carpet. And they have no problem admitting to me that that's their goal. And I would tell them right off the bat, this producer is supposed to be behind the scenes. That is the function of a producer, obviously along with being objective, which I think is truly the most important function of being a producer. It is to benefit the career of the artist. Everything that you do should be for them, to get them up there to whatever kind of stardom, success, uh, popularity. Um, and, and lately, I feel like the word producer is almost the same as the word artist in the sense that you're going to be famous. You're going to be... Uh, at the Grammys with something in your hand, you know, with people taking your picture and everything like that. That's not what I do. <laughs> you know, I work in the studio. We don't have any windows, okay? I never see the light of day. <laughs> so we would have a little frank conversation about what, it, what that actually means, being a producer, before I would even recommend a certain type of, of curriculum. Yeah, but the two types of curriculum that I recommend for producers are studio recording type classes, whether you want to call them audio and acoustics, sound recording technology, uh, studio recording or anything like that, along with music. And not just music theory, music performance. You have to know what it feels like to be that person in that booth in front of that microphone. You just have to learn to play something. Um, and, and when I do a big band, I mean, I haven't played trumpet, but I've played in groups with people who are playing trumpet. Uh, I've played alto saxophone. I've played a little bit of piano in my life. I've, played, I've majored in guitar. I feel like I could relate to even somebody playing like an oud or something like that. I would have some way to relate to their abilities. So it would just be imprudent for somebody to do that with no background. Now, can you remind me, who the heck is that guy's name on um, uh, American Idol? The guy who calls everybody out? Simon, Simon is the guy's name. Now, Simon has a different story. Uh, folks have asked Simon, well, how, how can you tell all these people that they suck so hard? Uh, well, who are you? What do you do? And sometimes I feel like that person because, you know, I don't tell people that they suck the same way that he does. Uh, I'm, <laughs> you know, these people are my clients, <laughs> so uh, I don't kick them off the stage, you know. Um, but his, his answer was very interesting. And this is the exact opposite of what I've just said. I've said study, learn sound recording, learn music, edify yourself, become, uh, have pallets of music in, in your head, constantly listen to music. He says, don't do any of that. He says, I am the right person to ask because I know just about as much as the average music consumer and nothing more. You know, uh, and I don't know that there's much to that philosophy, but his philosophy is um, 
that he's the right person to do artist development or to choose the next big thing because he really doesn't sing, he doesn't play an instrument. All he knows how to do is enjoy music, and that's it. So put a little bit of that into what I just said and say, along with being very musically savvy, technically savvy, you also have to be able to be just a laid back kind of music consumer at times and just realize how this is going to be presented to somebody who is not very musical. <laughs>